All right, we're on to our women's absolute op open class final here. <laughs> Gabriele Pisanya taking on Talita Lima. I believe, this should be a war. I believe this is the uh, super heavy champion and the middleweight champion. Both really dominant performances the entire tournament. Really excited to see these two ladies go at it. Talita is a new black belt. So this will be a treat. Quite an exchange to open up here. A little bit of a jockeying for top and bottom position. Gabrielli with a nice pull, but if they reset correctly, Talita has a nice grip set up to start a good pass. Double under position. Now, one thing to note about Gabrielli is she is one of the most tactical fighters that we see. I mean, she's an incredible athlete overall, beautiful jiu-jitsu. Go for she, a no arm triangle whoa. here. Whoa. <laughs> we do. <laughs> this is. I mean, I mean, it looks, it looks kind of tight. I'm not going to lie. It's not somewhere I want to be. <laughs> Gabriella is one of the strongest women I've ever felt. Unreal. So if anyone can finish a no arm triangle, it's her. And like I was saying, one of the most tactical women that we see in the divisions, fighters overall, women, men, um, just so, so smart, understands the rules really well. But a unique person who understands the rules, plays really tactically, but at the same time is extremely dominant and always active. You don't find her stalling. You do not find her riding out the clock very often. Um, it's just extremely dominant overall. And so it's a, it's a nice to see the combination of the two. And it's inspiring to know that you can have two. You can be tactical. You can be aware of the rules. You can play the game the way it should be played. And you can be active and dominant um, and extremely successful and have a high submission rate, right? And that's exactly how I describe Gabrielli. So I haven't seen as much of her. Again, new black belt, but looked spicy today. So. Definitely bringing it to Gabrielli. Another no arm triangle attempt. One thing to note about this technique is it's almost impossible to earn an advantage for it, no matter how close it may be, just because of the unlikely nature that it could be finished. But I've seen it done. It's possible. And Gabrielli may be the one to pull it off next. Yeah, I think Gabrielli is probably looking for the advantage there. But like you said, it's because it's unlikely, it's really hard for the referee to tell if it's close at all. So usually unlikely to get the advantage for that. Salita looking comfortable, though. I mean, I think that's a sign that it probably isn't too threatening. If it was threatening, she probably wouldn't stay here in the double unders. So it probably doesn't feel too tight for her. But Gabrielli now able to work her left leg back inside, so she's not in so much danger of the double under anymore. I think it's almost inside. Maybe not quite yet. Seven forty-five left on the clock here. Zero, zero. Nice overhand grip here from Gabrielli, and she opts to switch to the far leg. Now in a bit of a better position. Selena now diving that left knee to the floor, or right, at least right on top of the hamstring. Maybe looking to cut an angle to the left, then back to the right or so. Gabrielli may be thinking uh, Omoplata triangle set up here. She extends the arm of Talita, but instead we end up here in close guard. But still, after being stacked for several moments of double unders, this is probably a bit of relief for Gabrielli. Yes, this is a great position. Gabrielli's close guard is uh, extremely dangerous, has a lot of finishes from here. Climbs to the back, will attack the arm, the triangle. Finishes cross collar chokes from the close guard quite often, actually and does so either with a traditional cross collar, she may open the lapel and wrap it around. But very long, strong legs as well, so very hard to break open this closed guard. It's usually her decision. Gabrielli now creating a slight angle here, kind of hipping out a little bit. Maybe looking to drain the arm across. But Talita recenters. Talita doing her best to keep both arms safe inside. 
but every time she tries to stand up to open the guard, she feels her arms being dragged across or something exposed. She drops back to her knees. Seeing a lot of micro adjustments here. Gabriele kind of feeling to lead out, it looks like. Seeing where the openings might be. And now she may be finding an opening back to the back of the arm. Gabriele does come up on top. She'll have the two. We'll get reset in the center here. This is going to come up on top for a good passing position here for Gabrielli. But Talita, of course, is definitely going to be looking to recover her guard right away and start to explode, create big movements. I think it's safe to say we're past the feeling out point now. We're thinking we're going to pick up the action a little bit. Gabrielli's going to feel a little more confident. Talita's going to have to start moving to recover. Less than five minutes to go, so over halfway. That's right. It's a critical juncture in the match here for Talita. She does not want to have Gabrielle on top of her very long. Tricky position here because there is access to the leg, but there is also a real danger of the leg drag if Gabrielle is able to smash her right knee down. But Toledo looking very comfortable here, stacked. Still going for the leg, still searching for that far knee control. This is a lot of pressure to withstand, though, from Gabrielle Pisania. Yeah, Gabby is more than happy to stay here all day. It's for a little bit of a backstep pass. Now in open territory, steps on the shin. Showing us some little footwork there from Gabby Fasania. Heavy knee cut pressure here. Toledo looking to pass a lapel underneath the leg to see if she can save that foot from sliding through. We notice how Gabrielle is not rushing through the pass. She's just smashing the leg down, kind of exhausting Talita here, making her work, cooking her a little bit. We've talked about that a lot today. She does have her strong cross face, but, you know, looking too early for the knee cut but could potentially leave some space for Talita to recover, especially with that lapel grip. Gives you a little bit more time, just an extra second or so, to maybe put that left leg in for a half butterfly hook, bring the leg over the chest. Talita trying to sit up into the pressure of Gabby. Changes tactics now. Great adjustments here by Talita. Gabby nearly peeks out to the back. Oh, beautiful scrambling abilities from Gabby Pisani on display there. Talita had a nice moment, but Gabby did not let that happen for very, very long. Capitalized. Beautiful back control here. She has one hook in, but the hips are directly over the top of the hips. So establish a great chest to back connection and really centered on Toledo, which shows a great control. So she might start looking for the submissions early before she even worries about putting the hook in. Yeah, you can see Gabby looking to acquire the collar underneath the neck here. up on top with those hips centered again. She'll look to have both hooks in now, awarded those four points. Very strong back control here to have a 6-0 lead with about two minutes left. Completely flattened out now is Talita. Gabby driving the hips down. This is one of the worst positions you could be in. Extremely uncomfortable. Two minutes left on the clock. One thirty left, 6 0 lead for Gabriele Pisania. Super heavy champion and now looking to win the open class as well. But Talita kind of closed up here with her elbows in tight, doing her best to kind of keep her neck and her arms protected. 
But Gabby's starting to come off to the side. Looks like she has a Kimura grip on this top arm. They start to have a finish on the arm here. She could drive the hips in, go belly down on the arm bar. Well, the arm looks to be extended here. This may be it. And she gets the finish, your European Open class champion with a double gold finish, Gabriele Pisania. Beautiful work from Gabby Pisania. Yeah. 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 Yeah.